Hello, and welcome to episode 6 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the ATST from Fantasy Flight's Imperial Assault. The ATST is a spectacular miniature and one of the easier figures to paint, but also one of the most fun. We're going to use some fairly rough techniques to bring the figure to life that should give us striking results with relative ease. Here are the steps. After assembling the miniature, we'll undercoat the figure using a grey primer. We'll then use a large flat brush to apply a strong light grey base tone. We'll follow that with a bright dry brush to add some heavy highlights. Next, we'll apply a black wash to the entire figure, but we'll be wiping the wash from the larger flat areas to preserve the highlights, resulting in a subtly weathered look. Then we'll add some rich grime and rust effects, before finishing the miniature off with a simple but effective scenic base. Let's begin. We begin by removing unwanted mould lines in the usual way, before assembling the miniature. I generally like to use plastic glue because it actually melts the surface of the joints, creating a very strong bond. If you experience difficulty fitting the front turret, you may need to file or carefully cut back the node on the inside of the housing to get it to fit. We won't be gluing this turret however, as we want it to remain movable. Finally, we spray the miniature, ideally with a grey primer, although black would also be fine. Just be sure to rotate the head of the miniature between blasts to ensure we get good coverage. We're now ready to begin painting. Now we're going to apply a light grey base coat using Celestra Grey. However, I've chosen not to thin my paint as we normally would. This is so that we can achieve a strong tone using a large flat brush quickly and easily, whilst avoiding getting paint into the recesses, a bit like when we apply a dry brush. So what we're applying is something of a combination of base coat and first highlight. The main danger with applying the paint unthinned in this way is that we want to avoid letting globs of paint appear at the edges of the figure. To avoid this, we don't want to load our brush with too much paint. We apply it mostly with the flat of the brush, and after the first few strokes when we have less paint on the brush, we can apply the rest of the loaded paint a bit like a very heavy dry brush. If your brush feels like it's beginning to clog with paint, then it's best to pause to give it a good wash before continuing. After the first coat, it's best to let it dry for a good 15 minutes before adding a second final layer. You may like to switch to a smaller brush to cover some of the harder to reach places. What you should end up with is a strong bright grey colour covering most of the ATST, perhaps with some darker tones in the recesses remaining. To highlight the miniature, we're now going to apply the dry brush. We're going to apply a fairly heavy dry brush using Citadel's Longbeard Grey. As you can see, this paint has a very thick, almost dry consistency. We work some paint thoroughly into the brush and begin highlighting the miniature using mostly the flat edge. As usual, we're aiming to pick out the raised detail and give definition to the edges. But we're also going to use it to easily add some bold highlights to the parts of the figure which we imagine would catch the most light. These might be the top of the head, the tops of the side turret mounts, as well as the protruding parts of the legs. I would also give plenty of light to the front window area of the ATST, as they essentially form the eyes of the figure, and should be considered the focal point. You may like to switch to a smaller dry brush to gain a little more control whilst highlighting some of these areas. 
Once you're happy with the highlights, we can now paint the guns to give them a darker metallic finish, similar to the eWeb engineers. To do that, we give them a dark grey base coat, which may need two layers. You may also like to paint the front two windows with the same grey. We then give the guns a good dry brush with some lead belcher. Once the guns are finished, it's a good idea to leave the miniature for a while because the paint needs to be completely dry for what we're going to do next. For this step, we're going to need plenty of null oil, a large brush and something to wipe away the excess wash like an old sock. I would then transfer around 10 very large brushfuls of the wash to a palette for ease of access. Our plan is to apply the wash to the Scout Walker section by section, but then quite quickly wipe down the flat areas which we don't want to be darkened. This will save us the trouble of having to highlight these areas back up again afterwards, and if we use a mostly downward motion as we wipe, we might get a subtle rain-stained weathering effect. After applying the wash to a section, our priority is to wipe down the biggest brightest areas first, before the wash has a chance to dry. The longer we wait, the stronger the wash will cling to the surface. We can see here that a bit of semi-dried wash allows us to create some really effective highlights by simply wiping away different amounts of the shade. Just take care not to rub too hard as we don't want to rub off the paint layer beneath. Although we want to control the wash as best we can, there's nothing wrong with allowing some imperfections or streaking to form here or there, as it will only add to the nicely weathered look we're aiming for. Once we've worked our way around the walker section by section, we should take a smaller brush and check we've got the wash into all of the tiny gaps. We also want to ensure that the guns have a good coat of the non oil too. Once the process is complete, you should see that the ATST has a beautifully high contrast look, with its light grey plating and deep black recesses, along with a gently weathered finish. As a final touch before moving on, we might like to add a few additional highlights by adding some white to the Celestra grey. This is a great way to add a little extra definition, especially to the edges of the miniature. If you'd like your ATST to have a relatively clean look, you could actually finish here. For a more grungy look, let's go to step 5. We're now going to use some of Citadel's Typhus Corrosion to create an oily grime effect. This is a highly effective and fun product to use. 
It looks like a slightly watery brown paint, but actually has a fine gritty texture. All we do is apply it unthinned to any part of the model we might expect a buildup of grime, such as at the bases of any joints or bolts. It looks particularly effective when applied to look like downward running streaks. It is also a great way to add definition to the joints in the armour. It can also be applied liberally to the feet area to look like general dirt. Using an old brush might be a good idea when applying paint in this way. It works well when built up in layers too, with each subsequent application adding a darker, more gritty concentration. This is my favourite kind of weathering, as it also provides another way of adding extra shade to the miniature. Here we can see how easily it lets us shade the underside of this turret mount, adding character and grime whilst also strengthening the shadows. You can see that I've added grime to pretty much most of the inner and underside parts of the ATST. I'm going for a fairly heavy amount of grunge, but you can of course add as much or as little grime as you like. The next bit of weathering you might like to try is adding a simple rust effect using Riser Rust. This is applied just like a light dry brush and works especially well over the dried typhus corrosion due to the raised gritty texture. If you go too far with the rust, you can always paint over it with some additional typhus corrosion to tone the effect back down. I might also add some sparing blaster damage using a black and brown mix, just as we did with the stormtroopers. That's all the weathering we're going to add for now. Next, we'll tackle the base. We could just paint the base grey, but I feel that the ATST deserves something a little more special. We're going to use another of Citadel's technical paints, Sterland Mud, to provide both the desired texture and base colour for a muddy outdoor effect. We simply apply the paint directly from the pot, working a nice thick texture as we do so. It should be left for an hour to dry completely, after which you may like to add a little extra to any parts of the base where you feel the texture might be lacking. To highlight the ground, we're going to use two lighter tones, starting with a moderate dry brush of XV88, followed by a lighter application of some terminus stone. I'm going to add an additional touch to my ATST and that is to add a few small metallic chips and highlights to give a little extra definition, especially to some of the edges, but also to sell the illusion that the Scout Walker is actually made of metal.
With the painting now done, we give the figure a spray of matte varnish. Finally, to really bring the base to life, we're going to add some sill floor tufts of grass. These come in various shades and sizes. Here I have some 2mm early autumn and some 4mm late autumn tufts. To add them to the base, we simply peel a clump off the sheet, and tweezers are quite helpful here. Apply a dab of super glue either to the grass or to the base, and press it down. This is another of those steps that, once you have the right materials, is incredibly easy but so effective. Our ATST is now ready for battle. Thank you so much for watching and joining me on this journey. With the ATST complete, we have now finished the core units of the Imperial Faction. Stay tuned as we have plenty more figures to cover from Imperial Assault. Happy painting!